Hello, my YouTube friends. Well, video number two for the day. Today is Sunday. It's April 28th. I hope you're all doing well. I'm going to talk about my favorite comment in my video that I did the other day on nine stocks that you have to have in your portfolio. Um, I'm going to go over that, and then I'm going to talk a little bit in detail about Meta's earnings and Tesla's as well, and my thoughts on those two companies. So stick around. It'll be a great video. Good morning. My name is Adam Kahn, and this is Investing with Adam K. I hope you're all doing well. It's Sunday, April 28th. Um, beautiful, beautiful day here in Las Vegas. I hope you guys are having a nice weekend. So I'm going to talk about a comment that was made on my nine must-own stocks video that I found really interesting, and I want to harp on a bit just because it goes against what I'm talking about on the video, and I think there's a misunderstanding here. And well. <laughs> or they don't like my video and just want to tell me what they disagree with, which is totally cool because I like the conversations. But I wanted to address it in video context because, you know, I didn't want any miscommunication in, in terms of the wording or things to go back and forth. So I'm going to quote some of the things that was said and where I, I have a difference of opinion and why I talk about the things I was talking about. This came from somebody named Scott. What started the quote was, diversify, diversify portfolio across all of the 11 sectors, large cap only. Well, if I want to diversify against, across all of the 11 sectors, I'll just buy ETFs. And I don't mean that sarcastically. If I, don't, if I want to take the advice of what's traditionally told because I want to be covered in, in case of market correction or anything else, that's fine. And that's a good way to invest. But there's no reason for me to pick companies if I want to be that spread out amongst all the 11 sectors and everything else. I really would probably just buy the SPYs or the QQQs if I was looking to be diversified. There's also other great ETFs out there like the SCHD and VOO. And I would go talk to your financial planners about tons of them because they have really low costs to get into them. And it's a really good way to own the markets. What I was talking about in that video is really trying to beat the markets and own what I think are the best companies. If they end up being hyper-focused into certain industries, well, so be it. I still think they're the best companies. And again, if I wanted to be that well diversified, I, which I try to be a little bit, but I would go that route by buying the ETFs to cover all of those things. But if Meta and Google and Amazon are looked at as all in a similar field, well, I still think they're the best companies around. And I still did include things like ExxonMobil. I didn't go into healthcare. And, you know, to be honest, he talked about AbbVie. Uh, I recently did another video recently about how I actually just got out of AbbVie to go into Pfizer simply because I think AbbVie is a little over-demanded right now, and people are a little overexcited about it, and Pfizer is out of favor. So sure, I want to be in the healthcare industry, but I don't see these as the top companies, and I don't expect AbbVie to outperform companies like Google or Meta or, or the like going forward over the next five to ten years. And while I think they're a great company and there's no reason not to be invested in them, I wouldn't pick that as one of my nine stocks that I need in my portfolio that I think everybody should own. It's also why I didn't include Pfizer for the same reason. While I think these things actually play a part to one's overall portfolio, that video was specific about the companies I think that you have to have in your portfolio if you want to have growth going forward. And I tried to pick the top companies, and I really probably should have narrowed it down to the top five or six. Nine was going a little bit far because I felt like the five or six I was talking about were all very tech heavy. So Scott also didn't like Meta as one of my picks because he thinks that the CEO has no control over expenses, i.e., as he says, spending billions on the metaverse with nothing to show for it. Well, I talked about that in the video. And the concept there was, if you look at Facebook and where, where the revenue comes from, 
most of Facebook users are 50 years or old or older. Well, I'm guessing that Mark Zuckerberg is pretty aware that eventually in time, that's going to become a smaller and smaller revenue source. I have a feeling probably similar with Instagram, and he sees the same problem with any social media company. So, sure, he could just be a dividend company, slowly dwindling sales and not growing over time. And yes, the metaverse is not showing income today. But I think Mark Zuckerberg has earned my respect enough that I'll trust his judgment. And I would like to bet on him and the bets that he's making. I think he did really well with his vision on Facebook. I think he's done really well with his vision on Instagram. I think he has a vision with WhatsApp that he'll be able to turn that into monetization. And I think he's even sees it with Oculus. And yes, today it is not making money. But I think what he has is a vision of it being something that can be bigger than all of the others and maybe a potential to continue to grow, whereas his current places are probably going to decline in profits over time. Now, for now, they do great, and I, I get that. But I think that's a rhetoric that comes from the street, and you have to think outside the box. And what I was getting at was, well, yes, but if you're Mark Zuckerberg and you're seeing your company slowly get smaller and smaller, or at least that's what you see going forward, and you don't constantly want to be fighting the social media trend of, I don't want to own or be on the platform that my parents are on. So you constantly need to be changing to be the next platform where people are. That's a difficult task to take on. I think he has a vision for the metaverse that, yes, today it is not profitable, but I can't imagine how big of a, a place that could be. And I think Apple sees it too, which is why they're doing Vision Quest. It's the only reason that I kind of thought, geez, because I agree with the comment like you talked about Apple not doing well as well. And I kind of agree with that. They haven't come out with anything that's been ingenious anytime recent. And they're just relying on iPhones and things like that. But at least they're trying to get into the space of the future with the, the goggles and things like that, which for now seem kind of silly. But if you try to ex extrapolate where they could be in the future, uh, I'll use one of the examples I used yesterday, which is imagine kids going to school with their Oculus or with their Vision Pro. Instead of getting on a bus or getting in the car and going to school with the other kids, with parents who might be scared of school shootings or whatever it is, how about being able to put on a headset and be in class with the best instructors in the world who could teach thousands of kids all at the same time? They could do the projects. They could do all sorts of things. You know, it really could be an incredible change in how the world just grows instead of how it is today. I think that's Mark Zuckerberg's vision, and I'm okay taking that bet. In the meantime, I understand he is spending billions of dollars on these things without current revenue stream. And if it fails, well, he has the money coming in to be able to take that risk. And he can fall back and decide it was a failure and then start paying better dividends and just being an advertising company with what they currently have. But I'll take the chance with the guy. I think he's earned that. And I think he's pretty good at what he does. So while I appreciate you don't like Meta, really, I think that the path that they're going on is one I want to be on with him. And I'm not concerned if the stock price goes lower because this is the bet that I want to take. So if you don't, great, but I wouldn't be disappointed that they're spending money on different avenues to try to make the company grow. I think that's an actual great thing. The other one that Scott didn't like was Tesla. No consumer demand, limited needs to reduce prices, which is going to hurt the bottom line. Okay, so let's talk about that as well. First of all, Tesla has fallen from about $400 a share to $145 a share before they announce the earnings. So I think a lot of that is already priced in. And I also think that's the rhetoric that's coming from the media and CNBC and everybody else. I think you're getting a great company when all the bad news is coming out, which is one of the things I've talked about in other videos. 
I want to buy companies when they're on sale. Right now, Tesla is on sale. It might go lower, and I totally understand the thought process of the demand is going down and everything else. But I think the lower prices are already based in the new valuation of the stock. On top of that, there's so many things outside of just the car sales that Tesla has. And the fact that they're direct to consumer is what allows them to lower the price as much as they have. Similar to Meta, I think Tesla has a bigger vision. I think his goal is to get as many cars on the road for the other avenues of profit that you may not see in the bottom line currently. I think repairs are major. I think the charging stations are major. I think the robo-taxi, which everybody makes fun of, is, is major. I think the, the driver list and all the other things that I understand aren't showing profits today have a value that you can't see. I also think that Tesla is going through a maturing stage where they were in a growth period. If they really are just a car company, maybe the stock ends up not ha performing so well. But I think, again, similar to Meta, you have to trust Elon Musk and his vision for future. I think he's lowering the price because his goal is to get as many cars on the road more than anything else. And he's less worried about today's profits than tomorrow's. If you get those charging stations, you get the I, I totally forgot the car insurance that he's now selling and all the other stuff. The more cars on the road, that's going to end up driving your profits. And as somebody who has a Tesla, I can tell you it's one of the greatest cars I've ever driven. I've been fortunate enough to have some pretty cool cars. And now we end up being a two Tesla home just because it's so easy. It's a very user-friendly car. I can tell you they're cars that I think are better designed and prettier and the lines are cooler and whatever else. But I can tell you is just a user of it that I think they make a great product. I also think the fact that they've turned it into a subscription model of sorts is ingenious, and I think they'll expand on that base. Now, we don't get the drive, the self-driving one. I actually enjoy driving. I'm not sure how many people sign up for it, and it's a rather expensive add-on. But it's super cool that it's an add-on. And what I love about the car is it stays up to date. Now, the one that we bought from 2014 doesn't. But here's what's super cool. We bought the car in 2014. And other than replacing tires, we haven't had to do but maybe $100 or $200 in repairs, including what would be oil changes that we don't have to do. We had to, re we had to replace some thing around the tires that was $39 and change. And we were having trouble with one of the doors opening, so they had to fix the handle on that. And that was $100 and change. Well, we've had the car 10 years. And we're talking about $300 in repairs or less. Now, on top of that factor, and we've never had to do an oil change because they don't get oil changes. No timing belts, no little headaches with this having to be fixed or plugs or major repairs. The cars are really phenomenal and the deterioration from the battery has been pretty limited. I think originally we got around 260 or 270 miles if you charge 200%. Now it's at 240. And what I'm curious about, and I don't know the answer to this, if we ended up getting a new battery, it's a Model S, do we get the new one that gets 400 miles on a charge? Because if so, despite everybody talking about how expensive that is, the shell is still in great shape. If we could upgrade to today's battery, for somewhere between ten and $18,000, to me, that's like a brand new car for a really reasonable price. If we wanted to go nuts and repaint it or something else, you're talking about twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 total to have a brand new Tesla. I, I don't see that as anything crazy. I understand the batteries are expensive, but that's a lot less money than needing to go and get a new car. So I think Tesla has a great vision and a great future. I appreciate the things you're pointing to and even recognize them, but I don't think electric vehicles are going away. It, there's gotta be other people like me that the minute they've owned one, 
I don't picture myself ever going back to an ICE. I, I just don't see combustion engine as being anything I want to deal with. I get to come home and I plug it in on top of the fact that I don't have to sit once every quarter and wait for an oil change or go to the gas stations. Everybody talks about how long it takes to charge. It's pretty rare we actually go to a charging station and most of the time we're driving around town. So I feel like it doesn't take us any time. Drive around town, do what we need to do, come home, plug it in, go to sleep, wake up, car runs again. The also, it's really amazing. You just hit the gas and it's an instant. There's no hesitation like on a combustion engine. So it's a great product. I understand that demand has slowed, but I figure in time it'll normalize. And I think he's got an avenue for a whole bunch of ancillary ones and all the repairs of all the ones on the road. I mean, I go around Las Vegas. I see more of the Teslas than I see anything else at this point. Anyway, I'm not trying to pick on the, the comment. It's just more that I think these are great companies. And while maybe you don't see the same vision, that's what makes markets. And I'm sure you have great companies too. So feel free to invest in those. Feel free. We'll discuss them. I just have my ones that I really think are the top companies. And I think that fits in them. I'm not talking about today's valuation, as I mentioned. Like even Costco is very hard for me to buy at today's valuation. I just think these are things that if you want to be in the markets, you should have in your portfolio. Now, if you want the 11 sectors and you want to be well diversified, don't worry about the stuff I'm talking about. Really, just talk to an advisor and find an ETF that fits those needs. The, the markets are incredible to be able to fit everybody's position. Like That's why I say don't follow me, is what I love about stocks is what fits me fits me, and what fits you fits you. You really should talk to somebody to go over your goals and what you want out of the markets, because there's something out there that should fit your goals too. So again, thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment, tell me your top companies, not just to diversify. Let me know what you think of the economy, because I got to tell you, when I went to Dave & Buster's yesterday and their mob, I think the media makes it sound super scary, but I think we're going to see the market just continue to go up for a long time. Until that money gets drawn out of the high yield savings accounts and the CDs, and they get jealous of what the markets are doing, and they start plowing into it, well, maybe then it's gone too far. But currently, you know, we're climbing that wall of worry. Anyway, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of the day, going to go meet my family for breakfast and hang out.